All right. When you have a ketone that has an ester connected to the beta carbon, that makes the alpha protons even more easily ripped off. NaOET, or sodium ethoxide, is strong enough to rip it off. And when you get the conjugate base, which has a lone pair of electrons on this carbon, it will nucleophilically attack this alkyl group, substitute for the iodine, and you'll end up with a substituted beta keto ester. If you want to see the mechanism for that, you can look at either the mechanism for an aldol condensation or an enolate alkylation, and it'll be the same thing. So I'm going to attach, I shouldn't have called that R, the same way I called that R, but whatever. It doesn't matter which, what kind of alkyl group it is. I guess I'll call it R prime prime. And because in this example, there's still another alpha proton on that carbon, you can do the whole cycle again. Ester. Now we've double alkylated. I'm going I'm to make that R prime prime again as well. Double alkylated the alpha carbon. Now, here's what's cool, is that this ester group in acid is in equilibrium with the carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid, if you rotate around this single bond, can be drawn as an OH there with a double bonded O there. See how I've just rotated it? We still have our double alkyl group down here, double bonded O here with the R. Now let me show you how the electrons move around in this. The electron pair connecting the O and the H move in here to make a double bond. This single bond breaks to create a pi bond between those two carbons. And these pi electrons come up here to make a bond with the hydrogen that this oxygen is losing. It's like, uh, it's like a cyclization where the electrons move in a ring, except what you'll find is that uh, we end up with, a that's that double bonded oxygen there. We now have a double bonded oxygen on this end too. Now, obviously this isn't how the molecule looks. This is just carbon dioxide, which is a linear molecule, but I'm showing it like that to show you that only the electrons are moving around from this step to this step. We have our double alkyl group here. We've now created a double bond there, single bond to the O, which is now single bonded to the H, and we still have our R group. So we've broken this molecule into two separate molecules. This is called decarboxylation. Carboxylation. And it's super common to do when you have a beta keto ester. In fact, sometimes we add this COOR group just to make these alpha protons more removable. Now, this is an alkene with an alcohol. You can actually create a tautomer of that, which is just when you move the H from one to the other and, and move the electrons, tautomer, to end up with a single bond there and a double bonded O instead. So what we have ended up with is simply a ketone similar to what we started with, but double alkylated. And it was the beta keto ester functional group that helped us do that double alkylation and decarboxylation was the mechanism to remove CO2 and leave us with the double alkylated ketone. And that's how you uh, alkylate beta keto esters. I don't have anything for this moment, but uh, best of luck to you in your organic adventures.